Stuart Taylor, welcome to the show again. Seems like a long time. <laughs> Hi, Mike. Always a pleasure. Stuart is the Influential PMO. He runs the Influential PMO channel on YouTube. You should check it out after you've watched this video. He's also got a website as well. And at the end, I'll ask him to tell you how you can get in touch. Stuart, we're here to answer a question from a member of the community, but I don't want to make it easy for you by giving you advance notice. So <laughs> we are going to pick the question that you are going to answer, and I'm going to help you to answer if, uh, if I've got anything to add. Um, totally by random. So let's take a look at the setup. Right. So Stuart, we've got a uh, choice of six questions. Let's pick one at random. Question number five. Is the camera picking that up? Yes, it is. So question number five, that's the question that we are going to be answering. This is from a member of my community who says, there are one or two members of my team who simply never pull their weight. That mm -hmm. probably never happened to you. Uh, I don't have any spare capacity and we are very stretched at the moment. What can I do to get them working as I think they should? So before I get you to answer, is that a situation that you've encountered? Have you been one of those couple of people who doesn't pull their weight? Have you <laughs> managed one of those people? <laughs> yeah, I've worked with BAs before. Um... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think I'm going to have to edit that out <laughs> just for the sake of your reputation. <laughs> um, <clears throat> yes, um, I, I think that, you know, there are times when you're dealing with people and you, you have to understand that as a project manager, you, I assume you're a project manager, sorry, um, you are a driving force in mm -hmm. your project and you're coming at this if you're good and the very best product managers i've always met have always talked about having delivery focus or they've described words similar but mm. there's one who stood out who always used to talk about delivery focus and i, I, I love the way he used to do that if you've got delivery focus and you are focused on i have to accomplish this i have to finish this stage i have to finish this task i have to get to this master however you choose to do it and you're always thinking about progress and going forwards and forwards and forwards you are a highly motivated person mm. it's weird to think that other people aren't so motivated yeah and people just sometimes can't get as motivated as you and sometimes there's no reason why they should yeah it sounds it sounds really weird yeah but why would somebody who doesn't have your role be as motivated mm. as you and this is the um I think this is the dilemma because people like you to think, to think um, entrepreneurially mm. about any work that you're doing. And they say things like, well, if this was your business, would you go and spend this money doing this? Or would you spend your day procrastinating? Yeah. You know? And the truth is, though, we're not really in that position yeah. and they're not in that position. So if they're not pulling the weight, there could be some interesting reasons behind that. I mean, that could be unmotivated because it's too hard. Hmm. and they don't know how to address that situation, the work could be too difficult for them and it could yeah. be beyond their capability. Or it's too easy yeah. and they can't get engaged with it for this yeah. because it's just boring to them and they can't get fired up about it. Yeah. Or it could be it could be that there are other things going on in their lives yeah. that they might be dealing with situations that you're just not aware of. Hmm. So... I guess really what I would try to do in those circumstances is try to get to know those people a little bit better. Yeah. Not necessarily try to think of them as a pair, try to think of them as two individuals because of what's course. driving yeah. the behaviors could yeah. be very different. Yeah. And deal with them on a one-to-one -one basis, see whether there is something that's going on that they need to talk about. People who are unmotivated, undriven by their work, tend to be unhappy hmm. and just talking to you might give them a chance to open up a little bit more about what's influencing them and you never know it, it, you might be able to bring them back yeah i don't believe anyone is entirely irrecoverable unless they're being deceptive uh, hmm. i think if they're lying to you about things uh, that that makes it a little bit more difficult but if someone's just unmotivated you might be able to bring them back so the reality, even if they are lying to you, they're doing it for a reason. They're not doing it mm. 
almost certainly not doing it because they see themselves as a bad person whose mission is to lie to you. There's something they're doing to, there's a reason why they're doing it, which they think it makes it the right thing to do at the time. And absolutely right. And until you start to speak to them and listen to them and understand their situation, you've got no chance of, of motivating, no chance of understanding. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I always, since I've worked on um, doing assurance roles, mm. I've kind of categorized bad professionals into three categories, um, incompetent, lazy, dishonest. Mm. Incompetent isn't a deal breaker because that's just a lack of skills. Someone yeah. can learn to do better. And if they're motivated to do so, they can get better and they can add value. <clears throat> someone who's unmotivated, it's just a case of finding the thing that's going to light them up and yeah. get them going. Yeah. And don't get me wrong, though, some people find it really difficult to maintain motivation. So, yeah. you know, there's an awful lot that you're going to need to probably look into about how to keep somebody motivated mm -hmm. in a long-term way until eventually they're able to motivate themselves. Yeah. And as I say, dishonesty, that's, that's the one for me. Uh, okay, if they're saying to you, you know, I haven't done, I've done something, but I haven't, they haven't really, and they just, you know, that. that mm. <laughs> yeah, and you and you need to call them out on that because fundamentally, that's an abuse, and mm. we we shouldn't be tolerating tolerating that kind of dishonesty. I think I think you're right, and I think we need to start to figure out what are the motivators that work for them. And I'm a, quite a big uh, fan of the work long long ago of david mcclellan where you know, he looks at you know what do people want out of work and he used a framework of three three needs but broaden that out there are so many different things that people want to get from their work life and some for some people it is purely they just want to get through the day and earn some money and do the minimum they can okay that's fair enough but then they need to accept that doing the minimum is has a there's a limit to where the minimum lies and uh, and you need to impose that. Yeah. Well, if, if you identify they're just there because it's just a job, mm. you know, that's fine. It doesn't have to be a calling for everybody. Yeah. But that job is transactional. They do yeah. so much effort to get so much money in return. Yeah. And, you know, they have to do their part as well. So let's take let's take a, a couple of scenarios. I and mean, we don't know why these two people are not performing. I think you're absolutely right to say that... that it would be a mistake to assume that it's the same reason for both of them. Uh, the, the chances of that are fairly, fairly unlikely, although they might be pumping each other up to be disrespectful in some way. Um, let's take a couple of scenarios. Let's, let's suggest that, you know, uh, one of them, as you suggested, might feel that they, the job's too easy. So yeah. how you, you say, look, I can do this. It's just nothing. There's, there's nothing in this for me. It's just, it's tedious. It's dull. It's boring. And, yeah, there is some tedious, dull, boring work that you and I do uh, every day. Uh, it's mm -hmm. part of the job. How do you respond to that one? Gamify it. So if someone's got a repetitive task where they're having to say, <sighs> yeah, I, I, I remember way back, I had to do, um, I was doing this temp job doing data entry and it was mind-numbingly dull. It was just look yeah. at a form, copy it into a machine, get rid of the form, onto the next one. <laughs> So I started to gamify it. How fast can I go? How many can I get done in an hour? And believe me, the hours would drag. Yeah. <laughs> but, but I would actually keep track of how many I'd accomplished over an amount of time. And I'd try to find ways to challenge myself to actually mm -hmm. go either go faster or in cases like this, it could be, you know, how can I do this better? How can I um, go back to something like atomic habits, you know, try to do something 1% yeah. better each time you do it. Yeah. And, you know, how good will you be eventually? You know? So yeah. I, my mind goes back as well to um, when I was very young and I was talking to my dad and he, he was talking to me about making a, a choice about what career to do. Mm -hmm. And he said something along the lines of he didn't care if I was just sweeping the streets so long as I was happy doing it and I was the best at doing it. Yeah. And it was like, okay you can be the best at doing something that you might think is boring mm. or is uninspiring. There, is, there are ways to bring enjoyment, excitement and fulfillment into even the most mundane roles. Yeah. So all you got to do is look for it. 
Yeah. And gamifying it is a great way to, yeah. to accomplish it. And of course, that does work. And it works because if you are working hard to, to get to uh, at the limit of your capability in anything, you don't have time to be bored. It's yeah. as simple as that. And I think that's, you know, basically another word for that is flow states, isn't it? So, I mean, the thing I'd add to that is, you know, look for opportunities to, to test that out and by giving them some something else that's going to stretch them and develop them. Because we know that actually the ability to develop and grow and master things is a motivator for many people. And they're hopefully that if they are saying that that's the case, that they're bored, if you can perhaps delegate something that is going to tax them, they, they won't be. So let's take the um, let's take the other uh, example. Um, really and truly, the reason I'm not performing well is I'm out of my depth here. I, I really don't know what I'm doing and how I should be doing it. What are your options then as a, a leader? I think then you actually try to present the work that's being done as not one great big difficult thing, but as a series of simpler, smaller tasks. Mm. So when you look at something that's new or complex or it's just mm. challenging uh, a sense of overwhelm can cause you to just start to procrastinate and yeah. what happens then of course is you then end up having procrastinated not made progress and then you've got the difficult thing to do and you've got time pressures now yeah and th then you end up having all these uh, terrible feelings about it and that's often how people end up being off sick and yeah. becoming stressed and instead if you can help to break that cycle for that person before they get there. Yeah. So that can be really helpful. So, you know, have, uh, 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 was it, uh, is it an armistice? Or you just say, well, yeah, yeah, an armistice. Um, just, you know, bring it, bring out your dirty laundry. We'll deal with where, where we're at, you know, and if this is too big for you, if this is too difficult for you, let's find a way to break it up into manageable chunks yeah. in such a way that it isn't too difficult and i'll help you or i'll get the people around you to help you to progress and to get better at this if that's what you want yeah and because that, that, you can't just yeah. assume somebody's more ambitious than they are because you yeah. could be pushing them deeper into a trap that they found themselves stuck yeah. in but it does kind of put a couple of things in my mind the mm -hmm. first thing that occurs to me to ask you about is how you see the kind of role of coaching or mentorship in in this example I think if um, you identify that the person genuinely does want to actually accomplish what they're doing, they haven't just wandered in by accident or because you know what it's like. Uh, yeah. Sometimes people just head count gets moved because their head count and it's like throw a warm body at something yeah. and they could be doing something that's got no interest to them mm. and is difficult. Or on the other hand, you could be fortunate. You could have somebody who's always wanted to do this, uh, yeah. but they just don't know how. If you if you can identify that that's the kind of person you've got, then yeah, mentorship and coaching is going to really really help them. Mm. If you've got the wrong person, it's just in the wrong place. Yeah, you need to know that as well um, because it's to be honest with you, it's in their interest as well as your own to be able to get them into something that's more lined up to them and their needs. Yeah, one of the things that always always used to vex one of my old bosses was I would actually. Um, this is going to sound weird, but I'd always encourage the people working for me to keep the CVs up to date. Mm -hmm. And I'd say to them, if you're, if you're looking for jobs elsewhere, if you've got to that point where either you're not happy with what you're doing now, or if you're beginning to think about the next thing, come to me and I'll help you actually prepare for interviews. I'll help you to get recruited. And I did that for two reasons. Number one, I feel like that kind of thing, it kind of pays back to you in yeah. time you've got people out there in your network who remember you were helpful to them and you encourage them and you got them to where they need to go for us the benefit to us immediately is we know someone's going and we're going to have to fill that role yeah and it's much better to be able to do that yeah without being caught cold with one month's notice has been triggered or worse yeah. when they just go yeah and you know they don't have to feel they have to like phone in sick you know to sneak off for a, an interview you can coordinate these kind of things yeah and i think if you deal with people on that kind of level and you're mature with them and respectful of them yeah. and i think that encourages them to do the same with you yeah. and i found it to be successful if controversial <laughs> yeah <laughs> I, I think I, I came pretty close once to getting sacked for that by the way <laughs> helping someone to leave the organization 
it, it was felt like I was encouraging them to leave the organisation. Um, but the, not, the reality not, is, it's it, people will leave whether you encourage them or not. <clears throat> and if you support the best people, they, then maybe they will realise mm. that actually there is a place for them because you, they've got your support rather than actually uh, see. Yeah. So yeah, I, I think you, I think you're doing the right thing, and I. I I, I like that as a suggestion a lot. Um, I also I also like the thing you said, which I think kind of went past quite quickly. So I want to come back to it. If you know, if someone wants to be helped, there is no value in in trying to provide support of any sort. Someone who doesn't want to be supported, you're just mm-hmm. bashing your head against a brick wall. But mm-hmm. the thing that I remember from my experience of of actually making that offer and asking the question. Um, I didn't really understand how valuable the process was until later when I read about the science of influence and the role of making a commitment mm. in actually generating behaviours that are in accord with commitment. And I remember asking someone, you know, do you want my help to succeed? Because actually I'm not the only one who's noticed your mm. behaviour and, and I've been asked yeah. to make notes about your behaviour by the people above me yeah. and I said look you know you know that and I know that now I'm prepared to put the time in if you are but you need to email me to confirm that mm. you want to succeed here and he did and he's earning a hell of a lot more than I am now <laughs> uh, um, but that's a, that's a win that's a win for both of us and uh yeah it, you should always be thinking about what is right for the person because you will never make the wrong call if you treat people well um, i think we've got plenty there uh to help our there's, there's lots more we could say i'm sure but we've got plenty mm. there to help um uh, our colleague and, and a member of uh, my community to get going so let's see if i can uh, remember some of the points so the first thing is make no assumptions about why um, and certainly make no assumptions that both people are the same um, in terms of reasons and behaviours. Um, build a relation, build the relationship with each of them, listen to what they have to say. That will help you to understand their situation, help you to understand their motivation, and then for help you to diagnose the right steps to take. Um, we need to be situational in understanding, is this about motivation? Is this about capability? Is there too much, too little of either? And then address address that and make an offer, make a generous offer to support them, uh, but respect their wishes if they don't want to be supported. I think yeah. that's a, did I miss anything that we, we talked about? No, no. Um, I think I pretty much, I pretty much covered it. Okay. It's um, one addition though, um, mm-hmm. in offering your help, people often, have this, uh, this um, the law of reciprocity, yep. where if you help somebody, they feel inclined to help you as well. Um, Indeed, yeah. So sometimes people will try their best to repay you for the extra effort you're giving them. You yeah. sometimes do get more back you just do. for having done that. So it's yeah. uh, it, it's a powerful tool. Yeah, and you know, it's a natural law, I guess. So yeah. you're absolutely right. Reciprocity does work, and. We can do small favours in the workplace with impunity uh, and they will come back. Um, maybe not tomorrow, maybe not next week, but some point in your career um, if you make a habit of it. So that's really nice. Stuart, before we uh, say goodbye, um, what are the, the best ways uh, people can get in touch with you and can engage with your content? Well, to get in touch with me, <clears throat> I'm one of the um, many Stuart Taylors on uh, LinkedIn. So. Um, if you search for influential I'll put PMO, a link to the wrong one down below. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I, I'm not even the first Stuart. I'm not even on the first page of Google as Stuart Taylor's. You know, <laughs> there, there are people who've been dead for decades who are ahead of me on that page. <laughs> it's, it's not fair. So um, anyway, but you you can find me if you search hard enough. Uh, you'll have a lot. I'll more make it easy. <laughs> <laughs> but if you search on. Uh, LinkedIn, on YouTube, on Instagram, on Twitter for Influential PMO. Yeah. You'll usually find me or yeah. my content. And yeah, if, yeah. if you do want to reach out, if there's, say to the person who actually asked this question, if you've got follow up questions, by all means, you know, I'm sure you can reach out to Mike, but if you want yeah. to talk to me, you know, just drop me a note on LinkedIn. Yeah, you give and- a much better answer than I gave. So. <laughs> That's, well, that's great, and and I people should should be uh, taking a look at your videos on YouTube. They're they're, they're thoughtful, 
there's lots of real nuggets and it's the voice of experience it's not uh, it's not theory from Stuart mm. so um Stuart Taylor thank you very much for being an agony angel oh my pleasure thank you